you're at a wedding and circumstances force you to shoot the first look by yourself. Well, in this video, I'm gonna give you a step-by-step -step workflow on how to do this. My name is Pai, and I'm one of the founders of Lynn and Jersa Photography and slrlounge.com. We're teaming up with Adorama to bring you a new series of photography tutorials called Master Your Craft right here on Adorama TV. So let's dive in. What's up, friends? My name is Pai. Welcome to Adorama TV. As you can see, I got my podcast mic. Y'all get some silky smooth audio. Don't fall asleep. Look, I know the first question many of you are probably going to ask is, why would you shoot the first look by yourself? There are many circumstances where this is a necessary skill and you're going to be by yourself shooting the first look. I'm going to save that discussion, though, for the end of the video. For now, I'm going to respect your time and let's get straight into the points. I'll break this down into a seven-step workflow, starting with step one, choosing the scene. Okay, so what you're gonna want in a scene for a first look, or at least what I want, is I want a place that's kind of private. I want good lighting, and when I really wanna focus on emotion, meaning my clients, as we kind of discuss what they value, they've really talked more about emotion and expressions and, and authenticity more than anything else then I want to choose a simple backdrop. Now, if they talk a lot about the venue and the location and, and kind of how grand it's going to be, then I'm going to choose a backdrop that's a little bit more grand. But in this case, we're going for emotion. So you'll notice that I've selected this scene. It's kind of in this hallway away from, you know, everyone else at this hotel. So there's no passerbys. There's no nothing. And we have this beautiful window light that's coming in from the left side. In fact, we also have a bit of direct light coming in, which I liked a lot too. So if you notice in the images, the direct sunlight kind of creates this almost, I felt like a, a leading line effect where I can kind of use it to pull attention right into the center. I really like the shape and kind of what it was adding to the image as well. So I dug that. It's also a simple background. So you notice from the scene itself, you notice from the actual images that this simple backdrop really allows the expressions to shine through, right? And that's what we're going for. Okay, so we have the scene. Ideally, you're gonna select the scene well in advance. So I know I'm using this scene the morning of. I'll usually arrive an hour to 90 minutes before any wedding, any shoot, even if I've been there a million times, because you never know what's going on on the day of. You've shot the, the venue before, but maybe on that day they've closed off a certain section. Maybe they're doing construction. You don't know. So I've pre-scouted this, and I know that when it's time for first look, this is where we're going. Scene is set. Next, you have lens choice. So number two, I want you guys to choose a zoom lens. This is obviously my personal preference, and if you wanted to, you could shoot this with a prime setup, right? The issue is, is that because you're working by yourself, you're gonna have to move around a lot and to get different angles. Look, I, I wanna be able to zoom in and capture her expression, zoom back out to get his. I wanna be able to work from the side, get close, be able to come back, get a wide shot. And when you're working by yourself with a prime, you're gonna miss a lot of those moments and a lot of the interactions just simply trying to get into position and get ready or get the composition right. So could you with a prime? Sure, but I would recommend a zoom and where I would go is a 2470 f2.8. That's kind of ideal. Uh, a 2470 f4 is gonna be fine too, but that's kind of where I'm gonna go with this. Now, if it's in the budget and you're shooting Canon, I'm shooting on the 28 to 70 f2, but that's a $3,000 lens. It's not gonna make that big of a difference. I do like having the lens and I've talked about that in a separate video, but just understand that any 2470 is gonna be totally fine. If you want to go at a, you know, ball out and, and go wild with yourself, then go 28 to 70 F2. But the zoom lens is what I'm using. It's what allows me to get in and out, change my compositions, and to work quickly in a moment where I'm by myself. Number three, dial in your settings. Obviously, I'm going to tell you to shoot manual mode. This is for a variety of reasons. Number one, we want control and we want consistency between every single image that we're shooting so it makes our lives easier in post. But number two, in a scene like this where you're working by yourself, if you're on any of the automated modes, as you're shifting compositions, the camera is gonna be shifting, well, anything, shutter speed, you know, aperture, ISO, whatever it might be doing, you're gonna get inconsistent results. You might even see the shutter speed if you're in, you know, let's say, uh, 
a priority mode that drops shutter speed, you're going to end up with blurry images. So manual mode for settings. I want you to think shutter speed first. I generally like to shoot wide open for a shot, like for, for this type of a, a, a scene, right? Because I do want a little bit of separation from subject to background. So between F2.8 to F2 is somewhere where I like to be. And shutter speed is what's critical. I want to keep the shutter speed at least at 1 500th or above. I noticed this happening a lot. And in fact, my third, my assistant actually made the same mistake on this day, which is letting the shutter speed drop to like 1 250th because 1 250th is fine for typical portraits, right? We often tend to leave the shutter speed low so that we can stay at a low ISO. That's a bad call. See, in a moment like this, there's going to be a lot of smiles, laughing, movement, and these things are happening quickly. Like a reaction like this, a smile like this, at 1 200th, 1 250th, that's going to be soft. It's going to be a little bit blurry. You're going to catch motion in that shot. So 1 500th is my baseline. 1 1,000th is ideal. And look, bump your ISO. You're better off having a sharp image with some grain than having a not sharp image with no grain. On top of that, today's cameras can do insane ISOs and have no issues whatsoever. So there should be no reason to not be bumping your ISO up. Okay, so think shutter speed first, 1 500th, 1 1,000th is ideal. I generally like to shoot wide open and then adjust your ISO just to get you to the right exposure. What is the right exposure? I'll show you. Let's jump into the develop module. I'm gonna reset this out. And the right exposure is basically one where you're maximizing dynamic range. What that means is you pull the shadows all the way to the left without allowing your blacks to clip. So you're not losing detail. If I press J and look at my highlight and clipping alert, I'm not losing detail in the shadows. I'm not down here, right? And then you allow the camera to pick up whatever highlights it can. Meaning every camera is going to vary a little bit, but blown highlights, or at least some blown highlights, that's far more natural than clipped shadows, where you have to lift the shadows, and you get nasty green tones, bad skin tones, all of that stuff. So expose the left while preserving all your shadows and keep whatever highlights the camera basically allows you to. Okay, I'll press Control Z to undo and get back to this. Maybe I'll do another follow-up video to this and talk about how to kind of edit cohesively for a scene like this. Okay, with your settings dialed in, you go to step four, this is positioning. What I'm going to do for this scene, and, and this is going to kind of depend on the scene, right? There's a lot of things you could do for positioning. You could put them back to back without seeing each other and start from there. You could have her walk out to him based on a certain spot. But in this particular location, there's no place for her to walk to him based on where I want him to stand. So instead, what I do is actually position her in the corner. And then I lead him out, having him look away from the bride the entire time to put him into position. And his final position is this spot where he's basically in front, kind of nicely framed inside of this sort of natural shape on the right side of the image. She's in the background right there and ready to walk up to him. And what I'm really looking for in the first look is, is his expression, right? This brings me to step five, which is directing. Once they're in position, you want to make sure that you direct them and guide them a bit. I'm going to tell them both. So first, for him, I'm going to give him instruction and say, look, I have one camera right now. When you turn, I don't want you to turn past this profile. So basically, if my camera's here and you're going to turn, you can't turn past this point because I can't see your face. So if I can't see your face, we lose your expression, right? You can tell them this, by the way, but you'll see in a moment that sometimes it still goes a little bit not right. So you got to be ready. But with her, I'm going to give her the same instruction. I'm going to say, when you walk up to him, I want you to step right next to him, then have him turn, okay? Feel free to hug him. If you want to hug him from behind, if you want to do, this is your moment to do whatever. And after I do this bit of directing, I always tell them, after I do this bit of directing and coaching, this is your guys' moment. Meaning, once I say action, I'm not going to talk again until you guys are done. You guys both look at me and say, we're good, we're done. So this is your chance to say whatever it is that you want to say to each other, to talk to each other, to have a moment before the craziness of the wedding day. I always do that because you always get these beautiful moments as they sit there and kind of just come back to being present. Okay, 
So they are positioned. I've directed them. He knows now not to turn beyond that point. And then you're going to go ahead and cue the action. So you're in position. We cue the action, right? So I'll go through the shot so you can see. Okay. Before we start, I get that close up of her smiling at him. I pull back and get this shot. Now she starts moving. And in fact, what I'll do is I'll turn off my filter so you guys can kind of see the, the entire series of, or the entire sequence of images. Okay. So there she's about to start walking. She starts making her way and I'm kind of switching focus. As I notice her have a really nice expression, I kind of switch focus to her, then pull it back to him as she gets close. And then she goes in for this little hug. It's super cute. I love the expressions. All of these are great. I love how he turns into her a little bit. This is all just happening right there in the moment. Then when she's ready, she steps up next to him, but notice right here, he turns too much. So despite all the coaching, despite all the guidance, you're gonna need to be ready to kind of call an audible. And so in this kind of a moment, once again, being on the zoom lens helps tremendously because all I gotta do is pop to the right side and I can continue shooting, I can zoom in, I can go back out, I can work back. So he eventually did kind of straighten out a bit and then I pulled back out, went for a wide shot of them interacting, went back in, caught the hands, and then there was this moment where they kind of both looked at me awkwardly and they were like, we're done. And then they just started laughing. And I was like, that, that is perfect. This, this last little shot I absolutely loved. And this is the shot that like, it's going to be blurry at one 200th or one 250th. So making sure your shutter speed is fast enough. So that's how we get these authentic expressions and moments in sort of a, a well-produced and controlled environment. So that last step was just be ready to move, be ready to call a quick audible because things don't always go as planned. Okay. That's it. That's how you shoot a first look by yourself. Now I said at the beginning that I would talk about why this is important at the end, right? There are many circumstances on a wedding day that might call for this. Maybe on a particular day, you don't have a second shooter. So for example, this wedding day, this was actually a pre-wedding where they brought me out to kind of shoot the most important pieces to them. We did first look, we did couples photos, we did wedding party. The next day was the actual wedding day and they hired one of our associate photographers to photograph that. So they brought me out for this piece and I just was working with myself and an assistant, but not a second shooter. So that's one scenario. You don't have a second shooter. But other scenarios are like, well, maybe your second shooter has to go and do something else. Maybe they're called by the family and all you have is your third, and maybe you're not ready to rely on that person quite yet. So this was that circumstance, and I, I did use my third, but my third was kind of a backup, you know? Like I'm not relying on the shots that he or she is taking, so I wanna make sure that I can get those images all myself, and then whatever my third can capture is a bonus. So all this is to say that there are many moments and situations in your career as a wedding photographer where you might just be forced to Photograph the first look by yourself, or at least to only rely on the images that you capture. And in that type of a situation, this video will hopefully be handy. I hope you all enjoyed. If you did, I'd love for you to like the video and comment below. That helps us a ton here on YouTube. It helps get more views on my videos, which tells Adorama that you guys actually enjoy these videos. I do read those comments and I get ideas for future videos. In the meantime, of course, we'd love for you to subscribe to the channel. And if you all wanna follow me, you can find me at PyJursa on Instagram. See you guys later.